To me, the idea of entropy always seemed like a very nebulous and non-intuitive concept. It was originally explained to me as a measure of how disordered or mixed up a system is, but that was never particularly satisfying since disorder seemed to me like a very subjective thing. This bothered me for quite some time until I learned to think about entropy in a different way, as a measure of information, not disorder. When some systems get too big and cumbersome to do exact calculations with, one trick that is frequently used is to zoom out our picture of the system so that we can use the average behaviors to describe the actual physics. While this may not be exact, it typically does an excellent job, especially for systems made up of a large number of particles. To do this effectively, we have to bridge the gap between the small-scale exact picture and the large-scale average behaviors by assigning probabilities to the system being in different states. I covered this in a bit more detail in my video about statistical mechanics that you can watch here. But wait, I hear you ask. When we restrict ourselves to only looking at large-scale behaviors, don't we lose information about the system? This is where entropy comes into play. We can think of entropy as a measure of how much information we've chosen to neglect so that we can use this simpler picture. So the more exact we can be when describing our system, the smaller the entropy. So based off of this, let's try to define entropy. Let's say that we know how the system behaves at large scales, and we want to know how much information we lose by only looking at those behaviors. We know that each small-scale state has a certain probability to contribute at the large scale, so our definition of entropy should depend on these probabilities. Now, since we want entropy to measure how much we don't know, we should make sure that any states that we know the system can't be in don't contribute. So any terms corresponding to probabilities of zero should end up being zero in our definition. On a similar note, if we know the exact state of our system, there will only be a single small-scale state with a probability of 1. Since we know everything we can about the system in this case, the entropy should be 0 here as well. There are a couple of functions that satisfy these two limiting cases, but I'll just choose this one for now and I'll talk about why a little bit later on. Okay, so we're getting close, but remember that typically there are more than one small-scale states that correspond to the large-scale behaviors. So we'll take this into account by summing over all the possible small-scale states. So far, we have that the entropy, call it S, is related to the sum over all states I of PI log PI. Now, since the probabilities will always be between 0 and 1, and the logarithm of any number in this range is negative, we'll ensure that the entropy is always positive by multiplying this whole thing by a negative. Finally, we'll add in a constant, known as Boltzmann's constant, so that the entropy has units of joules per Kelvin used historically. And there we have it! This is the definition of entropy in statistical mechanics. So now that we have a working definition, let's try to apply it to a simple example. Say that I have two dice and I roll them into a machine. Now, instead of telling me exactly what the dice read after I roll them, this machine only tells me their sum. In principle, if I knew the exact initial conditions and all the forces acting on the dice, I could calculate their final state. But that's a lot of trouble, and I don't feel like doing it. So I just am going to try to find the entropy corresponding to that sum instead. So I roll the dice into the machine, and it shows a 6 on the display. Assuming that I can't tell the difference between the dice, there are three different ways of rolling a 6 with two dice. But they aren't all equally probable. For example, there are two ways of rolling a 4 and a 2, since either the first or the second die can be the 4 and the other the 2. But there's only one way to roll two 3s. So even though I only have three outcomes, since two of them can be rolled in two different ways, I really have five possible final states. The probability of each outcome 
will just be the number of ways I can roll that combination divided by the total number of states. Now we can just plug these numbers into our formula we found, and bam, we got ourselves the entropy. Okay, so now what if we are able to distinguish between the two dice? Say one is red and one is blue. Well now all five states are considered separate outcomes with only one way of rolling each. So they all have an equal probability of one-fifth to be rolled. When we plug this into our formula to find the entropy, a few interesting things happen. The first is that we get a larger entropy than the first case. This shouldn't surprise us though, since the color of each die is now more information that we're choosing to neglect by just describing the state by its sum. The second interesting thing is that our formula simplifies very nicely when all of the probabilities are the same. Since all five terms in our sum are identical, we can pull out a factor of five. Each term is also multiplied by one-fifth, so we can also pull this out, which will cancel the factor of five. Finally, we can put the negative sign into the logarithm and find that the entropy in this case is just the Boltzmann constant times the log of the number of states. In fact, this is true whenever we have a system where all of the possible states are equally likely. Calling the total number of possible states, also known as the multiplicity, omega, entropy can just be given by this formula. Higxenophysics has a fantastic video about entropy in this limit that I highly suggest you go watch. You can find it by clicking here or on the link in the description. By going from the probability form of the entropy definition to the multiplicity form, we can also see why we should use the logarithm formula and not a polynomial formula like this. When we say that all states are equally probable with this formula, the prefactor again just goes to 1, and we have a formula that will go like 1 minus 1 over the multiplicity. Now let's look at what happens when we have a large number of possible states. We should expect our entropy to get very large since the system can be in so many states, so there's a lot about the system that we don't know. That's exactly what happens with the logarithmic function, but the polynomial just gets closer and closer to 1. So this rules out functions of this form and tells us that we were correct in using the logarithm. The idea that entropy is a measure of ignored information to me is a much more satisfying description than this idea of disorder. Even better, it can be used as a tool for studying things like black holes and quantum entanglement, where ideas of disorder don't really make sense, but I'll save those topics for future videos. So for now, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel by liking the video, leaving a comment, or subscribing.